we have a vehicle where the catalyst monitor is not getting ready. However, it takes a really long time for the check engine light to turn on. So in this video today, we're going to go ahead and try to fix this. 230,000 miles and everybody said it needed a catalytic converter. It had a P420 code and as you guys can see, I got the vehicle to pass smog. I did not have to replace the catalytic converter. And I'm gonna cover this in this video with you guys. So you guys can pass too. And there's the mileage right there at 231,301. Stay tuned. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we got a 2004 Honda that has over 231,000 miles. This vehicle had a check engine light on for a P420 and everybody said the car needed a new catalytic converter. However, I got the vehicle to go ahead and pass smog and I'm gonna go ahead and cover this with you guys in this video and I'm gonna give you guys a complete backstory. So here's the smog and this was not long ago. This was on the 14th of July and I'm gonna show you how to get rid of a P420 catalyst deficiency code and you can go ahead and pass smog. I'll be jumping behind the computer quite a bit. If you're dealing with a similar issue with the catalyst deficiency code, you have to clear up any other existing issues in case you just wanna get this ready before the vehicle detects it. So in my case, I had a code on for a knock sensor, which I'll show you guys in a few minutes. I had to fix that code for the knock sensor so I can go ahead and let the vehicle enter the next part of the testing which would be to run the monitor for the catalyst. If you don't fix any of those existing issues whether it's for an oxygen sensor, a thermostat or a NOG sensor you will not be able to move on to letting the vehicle run the catalyst monitor to see if it's ready. And the same will apply to other monitors so you have to make sure that anything that's going to trigger a check engine light before the monitor has a chance to run and see if it's ready is going to be eliminated and the only real cure for my catalyst deficiency code is going to be a new catalyst because I'll tell you guys towards the end of the video what was the actual issue with this catalyst. So this was going to be the knock sensor part right here. I went ahead and replaced this. It was fairly easy and it cost me under $70 so this did need to go ahead and get replaced. So whenever you are dealing with a catalyst monitor or any monitor, you have to fix the issue. I will show you how to go around and get that catalyst deficiency code to possibly disappear. And that's what I'm going to be breaking down in this video. But if you have a NOx sensor, an oxygen sensor that is completely bad and that check engine light turns on right away, this issue has to be addressed before you try to set the catalyst monitor. So the backstory with this Honda is that it wasn't driven daily and Hondas have an oil consumption issue. So the oil actually gets past the piston rings and it goes into the exhaust system, which then will go and cover the catalyst. So this catalyst was completely covered in oil. And I found this out by accident as I was driving and I noticed that the oil light was on and I immediately turned off the car and I checked the dipstick and I realized there was no oil in the vehicle. Once I got the oil back in the vehicle, I continued to go ahead and drive the vehicle and this took me about 800 miles to go ahead and burn off all the oil off the catalyst. And if you're gonna do this in the winter times, just know it might take you a little bit longer. So focus on a longer warm up. So you might wanna let it idle for 30 minutes. And then if there's a hill in your area, use that extra resistance from the hill to get that catalyst even hotter. There's some other tricks that I have and I'll leave you guys links to incomplete catalyst monitors and how to go around them in the video description box down below. But you wanna get that catalyst nice and hot and keep speed steady as you're driving on the freeway. Make sure there's no pending codes and that that check engine light is not gonna get triggered by another sensor and you'll eventually get that catalyst monitor ready. If you do all this and your catalyst monitor still doesn't get ready, it throws off a P420, go ahead and try this two or three times. And again, focus on a long warm up. hit the highway, and you may have to do this for a little bit of time. In my case, as I mentioned before, it was 800 miles. And there's also some additives out there that will help you 
get rid of some of the gunk in your catalyst and I have those on the video links as well. Just know nothing will beat a proper warm-up cycle and there are going to be ways in case you do need a new catalyst you can get them for cheap. You do not need to pay two or three thousand dollars. I'll leave you guys a link where I actually got the catalyst for a Toyota Prius for under a hundred and thirty dollars and it was a direct fit and direct fit means that it just basically goes right in place. You don't need to do any kind of welding and make new pipes. It'll just snap in and you just put the bolts in place. Now let me show you some ways you can tell if your vehicle has an oil consumption issue. And I'll also give you guys an update on the vehicle and let you guys know if that P420 code came back. If you are getting an oil consumption issue, sometimes you can see signs around the tailpipe. On these Hondas, it's actually not that bad. And you do can see a lot of soot build up in there, but again, the car, has over 230,000 miles and one dead giveaway obviously is going to be by checking the oil and I covered this on a previous video I did on the Honda inside as well as that engine was replaced under an extended warranty because of oil consumption so I'll leave you guys that link to that Honda inside video if you guys want to learn more about oil consumption and the regular test that is performed at the dealer is they change the oil and they see if you're burning more than one quart of oil per thousand miles driven. And if you're dealing with a high oil consumption issue, do not forget to check your PCV valve. On this Honda, it's located right there next to the power steering pump. And it only takes about three to four minutes to change. And always buy the OEM one. And luckily, this car had a dipstick. So I was able to go and check that it did not have any oil. But on some of the newer vehicles, this is an issue because if the oil light turns on and you think it's possibly the oil level sensor on the vehicle, you're gonna probably ignore it and then you'll go and blow your engine. Let me show you guys what that oil light looks like in case you have run across this. So it is that light right there. When you see that light and the engine's already on, turn off the engine ASAP as that means you have no oil pressure or you have no oil in the vehicle and if you guys notice on the hondas you don't actually need a scan tool to see if all the monitors are ready i'll leave you guys a link so after that video was completed i actually packed up my bags and i headed to texas to buy a property so the vehicle entered its old habits and it was not driven on the freeway much again and guess what guys the check engine light turned back on for a p420 now it's January of 2024 and the vehicle is still running okay. However, you notice that the check engine light is back on. There it is guys, a P420 code. But it already passed the emissions test. So now the owner doesn't need to worry about it for two additional years. So I hope you learned just like I did that the vehicle needs to be driven on the freeway a few times a week if possible and that oil consumption can really damage the catalyst long term. As I was actually getting ready to go and finish up this video, I got a call from my cousin who works in a place in Canada where they make catalytic converters. And I told him what video I was working on and he wanted me to mention there's some other possible causes for your catalytic converter to go out. These can be running too rich, too lean, or having a sticky valve. So if you have a sticky valve, what will happen is excess exhaust gases that are not burnt up will enter your catalytic converter and burn it up. If it's running too rich, you can have a fuel injector that's staying open too long and is spraying too much gasoline. It will burn up your catalytic converter. And the same thing can happen if you're running too lean. So before you put in a new catalytic converter, if you have access to any sort of gas analyzer, this is called a five gas analyzer. Go ahead and hook it up to your vehicle and see what you can find out. And additionally, you can use a scan tool to go and run a scan on your vehicle and do a misfire count and it will help you troubleshoot any problematic systems in your vehicle that might not be functioning correctly. I'll leave you guys a link in the video description box down below to such scan tools so you guys can take a look at them for yourself. And if there is a question that I did not answer for you in this video, please comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you guys like this video, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up as I really do put a lot of effort into making these videos 
and I'm actually following up on this five months later. We are in 2024, and I wanted to get this out to you guys so you guys don't end up getting robbed when you do have a P420 code. And make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as it really helps the channel out and lets YouTube know that I'm bringing you guys valuable content and make it a great day. And I'll leave you guys those links at the end of the video and also in the video description box down below. Thank you again.